Hello, everyone. Uh, hello. 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 Thank you for attending this special presentation. I'm Professor Seth Elopod from the Squid Research Lab. Today I will present our findings from over six months of research into the ecology of this squid creature. I'll also tell you how you can get involved with your own research at the end of the presentation. This colourful ink looks unremarkable, but in fact it's home to a most extraordinary life form, capable of truly astonishing feats. While perfectly at home swimming in ink, these creatures can also survive on land. It might sound impossible, but when you see it for yourself, everything will become clear. Clearly, this isn't any ordinary squid. Our research has determined that these creatures can change into humanoid form. As squid, they can dive into it. While in human form, they can use weapons. They really are the most fascinating creatures. In most circles, these creatures are known as inklings, but our researchers just call them squid. Of course, there are males and females. Inkling boys and inkling girls, if you will. Our founder, Phil Aounder, witnessed them changing their skin tone and eye colour at will, like this. However, our intern, Shelley, says that the part that looks like hair changes colour each time they go into battle. The ability to change between humanoid and squid form starts when they reach a mature stage, usually around the age of 14. They can't run that fast on two legs, but just watch them go when they swim through ink in squid form. This footage, part of a peer-reviewed study, proves that they're around twice as fast while swimming. Jumping height is the same for both humanoid and squid forms. But by building momentum before leaping, there's a big difference in distance. Well, as you can see. Another discovery we made is that squid can climb up walls that are covered in ink. There are some obstacles they can't climb past, however. As you'd expect, they can only shoot ink when in human form. Aiming is perfectly simple, but highly evolved. By moving the Wii U gamepad, the on-screen reticule moves in the same direction instantly, so you can aim and shoot quickly and accurately. Quick as a splash, you might say. Spray ink in human form, then swim through it as a squid. This is really the key finding of our research into Inkling's movements. Squid are extremely territorial creatures and often flaunt their turf, as this footage shows. This footage came from one of our field research teams, led by Dr. Barry Kuda. What you're seeing is a turf war. Eight squid, split into two teams of four, compete to claim the most area within a three-minute period. They use many different tactics and weapons to claim their turf by covering it in ink. When the match is over, this cat judges which team covered the most ground. While standing on your team's ink, you can run or transform into a squid to swim freely. But if you come into contact with enemy ink, you'll have real trouble moving. Also, you can take out enemies by shooting ink at them. You won't win any points this way, but as they burst into a shower of your ink, you can increase your turf a little. If you're taken out, you rise from the splashes back at your team's base, ready to rejoin the action. That super jump is another unique behavior exhibited by these squid. When you tap a teammate's icon on the gamepad, you'll jump to their location. This is perfect for joining teammates on the front line or supporting any brave inklings who find themselves overwhelmed. On the other hand, 
Some squid achieve great results with less aggressive behavior, such as staying hidden from others and concentrating solely on covering ground in their ink. In this game, it's mind over splatter, that's for sure. After each battle, you're awarded points based on how much turf you covered. These points are converted to cash and also count towards increasing your level, which reflects your ability, in a manner of speaking. Let's move on to look at the five key turf war locations available from the start. This is Urchin Underpass. It's made up of several connected areas divided by concrete walls. Remembering the path between areas is vital. The path leading to the central plaza is a real hot spot where ink's sure to fly. Now we're looking at Salt Spray Rig. It's known for its mixture of high and low points and teams often compete for control of the high ground. Neglecting the low ground has its dangers too as your opponents could sneak in and claim it, turning the tide of battle. Next, Black Belly Skate Park. This arena's large open areas play host to truly fiery battles. Clinching the platform at the center seems key to holding the high ground, but it's not going to be easy. Wall Eye Warehouse. Use obstacles to your advantage to stay hidden from opponents, then get close and let them have it. <coughs> and finally, for now, Arowana Mall. Opponents attack from all angles, so good luck trying to expand your turf. Perhaps you've noticed the many different clothing styles, another fascinating area of squid life. One key finding we cannot stress enough is that, although they seem unremarkable on the surface, squid are extremely fashion conscious. They style themselves with headgear, clothes and shoes, which we gather under the term gear. The key to their fashionability, is that a word? lies in their natural habitat. This is the center of all that is vibrant and exciting in this world, Incopolis. Young squid come here every day to discover the latest trends in gear and weapons. In this truly varied ecosystem, each shop is run by a different marine creature. The shopping area is known as Booyah Base and it's right next to Incopolis Tower. The clothing shop Jelly Fresh is run by Jalonzo, rather uh, unique in his speech. He is nevertheless very popular with the young squid, or so our coolest intern Ray tells us. His idea of expressing his personal style is wearing a different t-shirt every day. Oh, Jalonzo, that is, not Ray. He's worn the same Splash Mob t-shirt for months. This is Krusty Sean of the shoe shop, Shrimp Kicks. He loves shoes so much, he wears four different pairs at the same time. Annie is in charge of the headgear shop, Cooler Heads. She's shy, but has plenty of fans. Strangely, a clownfish named Mo lives in her hair. Many a young squid has been stung by his sharp tongue. Finally, Sheldon from Ammo Knights. He's a real weapons nut and knows everything there is to know about arming yourself to the squiddy teeth. A warning, however. Our intern, Marina, tells us that the shopkeepers turn away uncool customers. Increasing your level seems to be the way to convince them you're cool. Only then will they offer you better weapons and gear. There are three main weapon types. The shooter type with rapid fire ink, the long distance charger, and the roller for squashing opponents and spreading ink. I will now introduce you to some of the signature weapons of each type. First, the splatter shot, which is a popular choice for new players. You can quickly fire ink by holding down the trigger, so covering a lot of nearby ground is easy. And it's useful in a showdown, too, as long as you line up your shot before firing. 
Another weapon in this category is the Aerospray MG. It only has a short range, but if you can get close enough, you can take down an opponent in the blink of an eye. As the Jet Squelcher has the longest range in its class, taking out distant enemies is like shooting fish in a barrel. Now, the Blaster. This one's special because its shots actually burst in mid-air. You can take down foes by catching them in the blast or by splatting them directly. Moving on to the Splat Charger now. As you might expect, you charge up an ink shot, then let it all out at once in a powerful blast. Weapons like this are perfect for creating ink paths along the ground and up walls or sticking it to far-off enemies who wander into your crosshairs. Another charger weapon is the Elita 3K. It has a long charge time, but a long range too, so it's actually rather well balanced. The splatter scope is equipped with a scope. This weapon's so accurate, it'll shoot the barnacles off a boat at 500 yards. And the splat roller. It's great for charging forward and covering the ground as you go. And you can even squish any opponents in your way. When you shake the roller, ink flies off it. So you can even attack foes who are standing back a little. Here's the dynamo roller. It's heavy, which means it's slow to move. But it spreads so much ink when you shake it that it can deflect incoming fire. These are all main weapons. But there are sub-weapons and special weapons too. You equip weapons in sets of one main, one sub and one special weapon. So it's vital to select the weapon set that suits your play style and the map at hand. Sub-weapons consume a lot of ink with each shot, but each one uses a different amount. When your ink tank lights up, your sub-weapon is ready to go. Support your teammates and trick your opponents with these crafty sub-weapons. The Suction Bomb. A tricky fellow that latches onto walls and surfaces, then detonates. Now, the Burst Bomb, which explodes on impact. It's less powerful than the rest, but these bombs can be thrown repeatedly without consuming too much ink. The Point Sensor lets your teammates know about any foes in the vicinity. Perfect for spotting any foolhardy opponents who rush into your turf. This weapon is a devious sort, the Ink Mine. It's invisible when placed in your team's ink and detonates when a foe approaches. Set one of these squid beacons and a teammate can super jump over to it right away. The Disruptor is filled with venomous fluid, which hinders enemy abilities for a short time. Moving on, and special weapons certainly live up to their name. Cover ground with ink as normal, and when the gauge is full, it's special weapon time. Many special weapons are very powerful, so you can really cover large sections of ground and take out groups of enemies. The Ink Strike is a powerful weapon with unparalleled range. Tap a location on the gamepad to launch a missile there and watch it explode in a devastating ink tornado. Pinpoint every enemy's location with the Echo Locator. Your teammates will be able to see your opponent's positions too, so there'll be no escape. The Bubbler creates a protective barrier for a short time. Nearby teammates can also pop in to share the effect. The Kraken strikes fear into every foe. Transform into an invincible squid with a powerful spin attack. Main, sub, special. Every squid enters a turf war armed with a weapon set of those three weapon types. Mastering them all is key to success. 
Outside Booyah Base, players find themselves in the plaza. Many squid gather here. They are actually other players arriving from Miiverse, or ones you have encountered in online matches. This world has its own unique fashion, and Inklings love to express their personality through the brands they wear. We recommend you study other players' gear to help you learn their strategies. If you see something you like, you can order it for yourself. Careful examination reveals the presence of an icon on this gear. This indicates a gear ability, which powers you up when worn. There are many gear abilities to discover. For instance, by equipping gear that increases ink efficiency, then firing your main weapon, well, as you can see, it consumes a lot less ink than usual. Other gear abilities might increase your attack, defense or speed, or even give you unique abilities like Ninja, Squid and Stealth Jump. The number of abilities gear offers will differ, of course. Put simply, the rarer the gear, the higher the gear ability. An Inkling can have up to four gear abilities at once. However, except the first one, the abilities you will get are randomly selected. The more often you wear the gear, the more abilities will be added to it. By leveling up your gear in this way, you can maximize its strengths or soften any weaknesses. Developing gear like this is a great way to come up with new strategies. By the way, about this mysterious figure in the alley. His name is Spike, and he can increase the number of ability slots on your gear. But in order to do so, you'll need a super sea snail. So it's not as easy as it may seem. But just imagine the possibilities. You could maximize the abilities of all your favorite gear, negating the need to compromise on style or performance. It's a utopian fashion society! Ah, did you see that strange-looking old guy poking his head out from a manhole? Observe what happens when a squid follows him. Beneath the concrete spaces of Inkopolis, a magnificent other world is just waiting to be discovered. This colorful character is Captain Cuttlefish, a big name here in Octo Valley. Inklings seem to obey his orders to fight against the octopus forces. Suckers! In a nutshell, the octopi have stolen the squid's precious zapfish, and Captain Cuttlefish orders its retrieval. Down here, there's no shortage of odd sights. Take this kettle, for example. It seems to be connected to the octopus base. I should say that the octopus forces are officially classed as octarians, but we'll just refer to them as octopi. They're very varied and dangerous, and certainly not to be underestimated. As in all of nature, there are many obstacles to be overcome. Use all your skill to recover the zapfish and emerge victorious. You can see how dangerous it gets. Shooting in human form, swim as squids, Heed Captain Cuttlefish's advice and you'll be fine. Each stage is host to a wide variety of life. Some enemies have to be outsmarted. Some move just like squid. Some use powerful attacks. And boss-like giant weapons defend vital areas. Occasionally, useful items can be found in stages. For instance, this armor increases your resistance to octopus attacks. There are other helpful items too, like the bubbler and ink zooka. 
These strange looking items are power eggs and they're scattered all over. You can use them to power up your hero suit, so gathering as many power eggs as possible is vital to survival. By far the most fascinating item, from the research laboratory's perspective, is the sunken scroll. There seems to be one hidden in each stage, and we believe they hold the secret to unlocking this world's mysteries. If only we could get our hands on them all. Let's take a short break now. My youngest son Perry insisted I show this video of the pop stars, Callie and Mari, who are huge in the Inkling world. I'll be back soon. Gil, roll film. OK, thanks everyone. Let's resume now. There are several modes still to explain. The second floor of this building is home to the Battle Dojo. In this local multiplayer mode, you and a friend can play without pressure. It's ideal for practicing before online matches. The rules of engagement are simple. Compete to pop the most balloons, which are each worth one point. But, if your opponent splats you, you lose points. Each match lasts 5 minutes, and any balloons popped in the last 60 seconds are worth double. We've observed many exciting turnarounds in these closing moments. One player uses the Wii U gamepad, and the other uses a different controller, like the Wii U Pro controller, to play on the TV. Once you've played in Battle Dojo and you're feeling a bit more confident about your skills, it's time to head online and battle against the world. This building in the city centre is Incopolis Tower and it's the entrance to online battles. There are two types to choose from, Regular Battle and Ranked Battle. Regular Battle refers to the turf wars I explained earlier. The team that inks the most turf wins. In online battles, the players on each team are shuffled after each match, so a strong ally could become a dangerous opponent in the next game. In this mode, you can easily join your friends who are already playing online. Teams are shuffled when you're playing with friends as well. OK, this part's important. You must prepare to tailor your weapon strategy for each stage. To provide further strategic depth, every four hours a newscast announces which two stages are available to play at a given time. Four hours later, you'll have two different stages to play on, and whole new strategies to devise. The other mode is Ranked Battle, which offers several rule sets. One is Splat Zones, where both teams fight to capture a specific area of the stage. The team that holds ground longer will be crowned the winner. Because both teams are battling it out over this territory, it becomes an extremely heated battleground. As you'd expect, in Ranked Battle, you receive a ranking based on your skills. Wins and losses will affect your rank. There are nine, from the lowest, C-, to the peak, A+. You'll be matched with players of similar ranks, so you'll find your level of competition easily. As ranked battle is sure to be home to fierce competition, you must be at least level 10 to access it. Of course, it wouldn't be so exciting without lots of players, so this mode will become available shortly after launch, when enough players have reached level 10. I have one more important finding to present as well. After launch, several free updates will expand the game even further. 
First stages. The arenas included on day one will give you plenty to wrap your tentacles around. But later, there'll be new stages that will require more skill. New stages will be available every few weeks. New weapons will arrive too. For instance, this is the ink brush. As you can see, it's a roller type weapon that looks like a brush. It'll be available shortly after launch. And of course, as Squid Fashion continues to develop, new gear will also be available. There's a new ranked battle mode coming, called Tower Control. When you stand on the tower in the stage center, it starts moving on a rail towards enemy territory. The team that pushes the tower furthest towards the goal is the winner. Think of it almost like a reverse tug of war. Of course, the inkling on the top of the tower will be a lightning rod for enemy attacks. So it's up to the whole team to rally round and protect them. It's sure to be a heated battle. A third type of ranked battle is also in the works. It's called Rainmaker. But even our most dedicated researchers, John Dory and Cal Amari, don't have any clear details at the moment. Please await further information. There will also be a major update to the title in August. First, the game's online features will get an upgrade. As more players master the strategies, weapons and stages in online matches, this event will add in two extra matchmaking options. You and three online friends will be able to form a team then search for another team to battle against. You'll also be able to create an eight-player match with just your friends, then choose a stage and rule set freely. As you can imagine, this will be perfect for settling old scores or starting up new rivalries. Coral, the intern we assigned to gather data about updates, says there will be more too. She is certainly rather giddy at the prospect. We've actually uncovered a few more entertaining elements of this world. In this corner of the plaza, there's a vintage arcade machine. Upon closer inspection... Well, this certainly brings back memories of my university days. This little game is Squid Jump. The rules are simple. Keep jumping and head to the top. It's very exciting when you play against the clock. You can also play Squid Jump while you're waiting to be matched with other players online. It certainly passes the time. You probably already know about these. They are Amiibo. There will be three Amiibo available at launch. Inkling Girl. Inkling Boy. And Inkling Squid. Each one offers a staggering 20 missions called Amiibo Challenges. Our latest study shows that Inkling Girl missions will focus on charger weapons. Inkling Boy challenges only use roller weapons. And the squid missions combine the Kraken weapon and a limited supply of ink. These limited ink challenges are sure to be really tough, so there's no time for squidding around. When you clear a mission, you'll get special gear. Even better, if you clear all the challenges, you can unlock an additional minigame. You can play them at the arcade machine in the plaza, or while you're looking for a match. You're now watching a fascinating squid custom we've observed, Splatfests. The pop stars who performed earlier, Callie and Mari, host the news show that carries all the latest information about online battles, updates and other Splatoon news. They're also the faces of Splatfests. Splatfests are special events where players all over Europe are divided into two teams. Each Splatfest has a theme like dogs versus cats and by voting for your choice you'll join that team then once all the battles are over we'll be able to see which side is victorious Splatfests have their own ranking system separate from ranked battle your rank increases based on the total points you earn during Splatfest based on your overall rank when the Splatfest ends you might get a special item called a super sea snail 
With this, you can ask Spike to increase your gear's rarity. The first Splatfest will start on June the 27th. And the question is... Which music do you prefer? Rock or pop? Which will you support? Pop music's catchy tunas or the thumping bass of rock? Every player on the winning side will own a Super C snail. So you can start thinking about which team you'll choose. There's plenty of time to mull it over. That just about sums up our findings here at the Squid Research Lab. I hope you learned a lot about the ecology of squid and octopi. But there's a lot more to discover in Splatoon. I expect you all would like to know how you can conduct your own research, as I mentioned at the beginning. Well, it's simple. By trying the Splatoon Global Test Fire Demo. Shortly after this presentation concludes, you'll be able to download this special demo from Nintendo eShop. Then, at these specific times, you can play online multiplayer matches before the full game is released. It's really quite extraordinary. Our research assistant told us that this demo is key to a special offer too. Players who download the demo can claim 10% off the price of Splatoon if they purchase in Nintendo eShop before June the 4th. This seems like an excellent opportunity for players thinking of taking the plunge. You can learn more about Splatoon and download the same stylish wallpapers we use here at the lab at the brand new Splatoon website. We're also looking forward to these new Nintendo 3DS Splatoon cover plates, coming soon. And finally, anyone who would like to look more like an inkling themselves will be able to do just that. New Mii Fighter costumes based on the inklings are coming to Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 3DS. More details will arrive in the near future. On behalf of everyone at the Squid Research Lab, thank you for watching. And we look forward to playing against you in Splatoon from May the 29th.